Over and over again, analysis of early Quranic manuscripts shows that they are incomplete and have been heavily redacted. We don't even know exactly how old many of them are. And the male manuscript is no exception. We are highlighting a book actually by this title, Creating the Quran by Stephen Shoemaker, who in my opinion and Dr. J's opinion really did a good job in addressing a lot of the controversial issues that we've been highlighting actually for a while. Uh, for the last couple of episodes, uh, we were zooming in, myself and Dr. J, on early Quranic manuscripts, and we're doing that intentionally to give a background behind uh, why those manuscripts are important. They tell a story about the creation of the Quran, obviously. Today, we're going to talk about what is called the Ma'il, the Ma'il, the Ma'il, the slanted. That's the, the, uh, the, the Ma'il is Arabic for slanted, and we're referring specifically to what is called the British Library uh, Manuscript, or the OR. 2165, that's the number that is given to it. With me here, of course, to talk about that is Dr. J. Dr. J, welcome back. Well, good. Yeah, it's great to go through these manuscripts to finally get some hard evidence and to look at what's on the ground. We have always said this, if you're gonna talk about history, go to the history, go to that period, go to that time, and let's look at these manuscripts. So let's go put up on the screen here, the Ma'il itself, there's a picture of it. We've got it right here. This is the Ma'il. It is huge. And this is a life-size facsimile. You can't buy this anymore. This is very expensive. I've got the entire manuscript here, and I can hardly hold it. Uh, I'm just opening up here, and you can see that it is big, and you can see it's slanted. And uh, some people think that this is a palimpsest. There is a bleeding through of some letters below it. Uh, but if you look at the bleeding through, you will notice that they're going the other direction. Really, it's the bleeding through from the back sec section. There's a word that's been added here. Here you can see an entire line that's been added in a different script. This is obviously the standardization. So you can see that there are some problems here. You notice it doesn't have any dots on it. It doesn't have any vowels. So no dama, no kasra. The dama would be the u a vowel that would be above the letter, the kasra would be the e that would be below the letter, the fata would be the a that would be above the letter, the slash. Those three vowels don't exist. Dots don't exist either. The nun, which would be the one dot above it, the ta would be the two dots above it, or the tha would be three dots above it, the ba, the one dot below it, or the ya, two dots below it, don't exist on any of these. You can see that page after page after page. You can just go through it and you can see none of them have it. So this is a very early script a very early manuscript. It's written on parchment, so animal skin, and it does have, in some cases, three slashes above it, or in some cases where you can see a versification. So verses have been added here, but they don't agree with the versification that we have today in other ones. At times, you will see a letter has been added in red in a different color. That's been added at a later date. Here you can see a verse of a uh, medallion has been added here, and I'm starting to get tired holding this up. It is so heavy. But this is a life-size facsimile of what is there in the British Library. The British Library has this entire manuscript, and that's why we have it here. Now, let's look and just look at the next slide here, and let's see what we now, what they're saying. Alta Kulich says very clearly when he did the study on this, and remember, it's Alta Kulich and Esanadu, these two Turkish scholars, they took these six manuscripts, this is manuscript number three, and they dated it, they looked at it, they spent five years, they were the first two to actually look at the manuscript and do just that. And when they looked at this manuscript, they said that this, they dated it to around um, 8th century, early 8th century, uh, so about 727-25. Before that, the man who actually was responsible for this manuscript was Dr. Martin Lings. Dr. Martin Lings was in charge of the Ridbat Gallery. He was in charge of all the manuscripts, mm -hmm. chronic manuscripts, there in the British Library. He is British. He converted to Islam wrote a book on Muhammad, a famous book on Muhammad, on the Sira, somewhat sanitized. He threw out what he didn't like and kept what he loved. Uh, he did a little bit of that, not as much as, as uh, uh, what's her name? I can't remember her name, the, 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 uh, the Catholic nun who went even further 
But he certainly was the one that dated this manuscript. And look at the date that he puts it. He put it to the late 8th century, mm -hmm. late 8th century. Let me just show, tell you, this is a personal experience. I, had, I would go down and show people this manuscript all the time. And back, I'm not, I can't remember the year, maybe the turn of the century, of just about 2001, 2002, I got a phone call because this had always been sent 790. 790 was the date for this manuscript. I got a phone call from somebody. He said, Jay, have you looked at the manuscript, the Mutton manuscript that's in the Ridback Gallery? I said, yeah, what, what do you mean? What's going on? He says, look at the date that's been attributed to it. It's been put to 690. I said, 690, that's seventh century. Well, I wanted to find out why they'd done to six. So I went to look, and sure enough, on the tag below it, it said 690, late seventh century. They'd put it down a hundred years. Who is they? Well, I wanted to find out. So I went on a phone call. <coughs> I didn't say who I was. I called up the head, and I can't give you the name. I, won't, I said I wouldn't give his name. I, uh, but if you look in the early part of this century, who was responsible for the Ridback Gallery and all the manuscripts, that man, he answered the phone call, and I said, sir, um, this, I gave my name, and I said, I see that on the manuscript, the 2165, you have reduced it down to the 7th century, 690. Can you tell me why? What's your criteria? And he says, well, it stands to reason. This is when the manuscripts were put. I said, I could have put it to 650. I said, oh, you mean you haven't done any forensic testing on it? He says, no, I'm not a manuscript. Uh, I'm, I'm, uh, my whole area of expertise is medical journals uh, from archaic medical journals. I don't do this kind of work. I said, well, then why did you put it to 690? He was kind of quiet. And I said, listen, do you mind if I bring the Guardian and the Times? Uh, we can get some journalists to come and interview you because you have now basically said that this is the earliest manuscript in history. And we'd like to know why. We'd like this to go public if you don't mind. And he was quiet. He didn't say anything for a bit. And he said, well, well what, what do you think I should do? I said, well, hold on a minute. Why are you asking me? You don't even know who I am. What do you mean what you should do? You should just keep the, the date that's there. Dr. Martin Lynx had a reason. Look at his writing. Look and see what he said. Look at the article that he wrote about it as to why he put that date there. He put it to the late 8th century. You're putting it to the late 7th century. And you have no reason and no idea. And you're going to be held accountable for putting it down 100 years. And you don't. And you're asking me what you should do. And then they hung up. I hung up within three days. When I went back there, it had been put back to 790. Now, can you see? A telephone call of 10 minutes to the man who's responsible for this manuscript, who knew nothing of what he was talking about. And I was asked the question, why in the world did he put it down 100 years? I bet you that it was the Muslims that asked him to do this. I'm guessing. But if someone who he doesn't even know can... can, can uh, 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 put them on the hot seat, as we need to do. If I can do that with this, a 10-minute phone call, can you see the problem we have with academia today? Yeah. Nobody knows what they're talking about. And even if they thought that they did know what they're talking about, they're not taking a position on it. That's why this is in such disarray. But that's my own personal experience that happened just about 15 to 20 years ago. Wonderful. Thank you for sharing that. And uh, uh, we are going, of course, to continue with our discussions about manuscripts. Next time, I'm going to talk about something called the Perigino Petropolitanus, or the BNF, and we will share more about that. And, and Dr. J has a copy, a hard copy of one of those in here uh, for you to see. Until next time, have a blessed day. Thank you for watching this video. Be sure to like and subscribe to our channel, Sierra International, and click on the bell so that you receive notifications whenever we publish a new video or go live. I would also like to appeal to you to consider becoming a Patreon patron by clicking the link right below. By doing so, you can give towards the production of these videos. There are also other options for you where you can give to our channel. I thank you from the bottom of my heart.